Are you one out of every three people in America who don't believe you're being charged fees in your investment portfolio? You are listening to Wealth Talks, where we hear about solutions for your prosperity. This is Tom and John McPhee, and today you get to hear about why free, something free, doesn't necessarily mean fee-free. Fee-free. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, um, according to uh, TD Ameritrade, 95% of all 401ks pay fees, and yet one out of three people don't believe they're being charged fees. And it's because the fees you're being charged are hidden. A lot of times someone will say, well, my money manager said, I'm not going to charge you any fees. Yeah. Well, they're talking about an advisor fee or a management fee. And on average, if you have $100,000 or less, you're being charged 1% across the board today. If you have more than that, your fee is probably higher for a management fee. But a management fee isn't the only fee associated with 401k investments. No, there there are others, especially when, the, for example, if the 401k is invested in mutual funds, then there are going to be what's called an expense ratio that is applied to those mutual funds that covers the expenses that are conglomerated in managing that fund. And, and those expenses are deducted directly from your account earnings rather than from the return you've earned. So you never see the uh, you never fee really subtracted. see the fee subtracted. Okay, so it's it's all net um, in what you actually receive. Now that's that wouldn't necessarily be a problem if you knew what you were going to receive. But of course, you're you're thinking you're participating in the market, but there's always going to be that uh, that subtraction from whatever the market rate is to what you're actually getting there in that fund. And that's why John Bogle always said, you know, it's not the nominal dollars that we see. It's the dollars after the fees. Yeah. And that's why he was so adamant about starting a, a Vanguard mutual fund because he eliminated many of the fees for managerial. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, is those fees now are sometimes even in the negative. <laughs> as promotion. Uh, as a promotion, what they bounce right back up to something very uh, that's going to be significantly um, beneficial for the manager soon after that. Sure. So some of so, the other fees that you are probably unaware of are transaction fees. A transaction fee is charged every time an order is placed inside your portfolio. And if someone's managing that portfolio for you, you don't necessarily know when those uh, order placements are going to take place. Mm-hmm. So if you're invested in in this group of mutual funds and there's a switch made to another group of mutual funds because you could maybe earn a higher rate of return with those, there's a transaction fee for that. Sure. It could be a transaction fee to exit one and to enter the other, mm-hmm. or it could be uh, you know, uh, um, an inloaded fund where you only pay it once you're out of the new fund you're going into. Mm-hmm. And, and then some of, the, some of the funds will have uh, front-end fees. Uh, they'll be called front-end loaded. It's basically a commission that's paid to whoever marketed the, that fund and sold it either to your manager or to you. Uh, there's going to be some sort of fee that's involved for that. And generally what happens with that is it just comes right off the top. So the amount of your investment going in, if you put $100 in, then you're only going to have 95 uh, if you have a 5% uh, front-end fee. Front-end fee. Sure. So going back to transaction fees, there's uh, those average anywhere from about 9 bucks to 50 bucks a trade. And mm-hmm. so that can significantly reduce what you thought you had in your investment portfolio as well. And it's important that you understand that your 401k is an investment portfolio. It's not a savings account. Yeah, and that's that's a you know, you it, it's kind of an oxymoron because you you want to think of it as your savings for the future and yet it it isn't. So so many people do think of it as savings, but it isn't because you have that risk that's associated with it. Yes. You always have to remember when you're whenever you're taking risk, it's not savings. It's investment. And when you think of it that way, it'll help you to quantify your savings and make sure you do have something that is safe and secure and guaranteed and liquid. Uh, That's what true savings really is, not trying to chase a market return and hope that it's going to be there when you need it. 
So we've talked about uh, manage moral or management or advisoral fees. We've talked about uh, transaction fees, front end loaded uh, mutual funds or commissions, and then there's something called surrender charges or back end loaded funds. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the fees that charge you to get out of an uh, of an of a position. Okay. So if you are um, in holding a, a certain set of a mutual funds investment and you want out, then uh, when you get out, they're going to charge you a fee. And um, these are real common with variable and indexed annuities, as well as uh, certificates of deposit. Uh, there's a penalty kind of if you exit before you said you were going to exit. It's also very common in um, indexed universal life insurance policies where there's a surrender charge, your cash value, you end up not getting it all if you get out before a certain time period. Uh, okay. So that's important. To Which understand. is kind of interesting because the indexed uh, universal life insurance are kind of investing in the same things, only they're using options to track the market so they're not actually in the market. That's with right. The, the mutual fund that's right. type investments. Same, same type of vehicle, just a hybrid um, investment strategy with that. Mm. So then we've got to look at something called accounting fees or custodial fees that are associated with um, 401k investments and, and really any investments. Mm -hmm. And these are charges that um, advisors and brokerage houses, and they range anywhere from $10 on up to $150 annually um, across the board. So it's important that you take time to discover and count up all these costs, which are fees, mm -hmm. before you save or invest your money. Because if you don't, you're not going to keep all the money you thought was yours, and that means you're going to be losing money. And that's the number one rule of creating wealth is never lose money. That's right. So as you're listening to this, you might be thinking, well, should I be investing somehow or, or researching these investment fees? Not necessarily. You know, you, you might just be starting with saving right now, and that's fine. You don't, you don't want to you, you want to minimize your exposure to these fees, whether you're saving or whether you're investing, because you don't have to invest to be subject to fees because banks have fees, too, don't they? They do. And, uh, of course, we talk about saving because that's the common term that is uh, to differentiate. But uh, Peter Lynch has said that saving equals investing in our market today. Mm -hmm. Because where can you save money that you're not paying a fee? And now we're getting right into it with banking fees. Okay. Okay, banking fees um, are huge. Uh, uh, and in uh, 2018, people lost, uh, according to bank rate, uh, bank fees charged about $6,300 to people last year on an average. Um, even a normal 1% loss on, on this can really cost you a lot of money. So um, it's, it's important that you understand the fees around your bank account, where you're saving money, where your checking account, is it charging you a, a fee? What you does have it to charge keep that you? minimum balance of 6300 That's yeah. right. You've got you've to keep $6,300 in that account. Otherwise... Yeah, you have to pay a fee of you some sort. You pay a fee, yeah. and then it's even a 1% on a balance less than that, you're going to lose that money every year. Yeah, so so if you can get a, a checking account that has no fee, obviously that's a, that's nice. You know, maybe it won't earn as much in that case, uh, but are you really wanting to put money into a bank account in today's world to earn money? Mm. Um, the, the interest rates are so low, probably not. And so that makes you... that. That encourages the, you to look beyond just uh, putting money in a, into a bank account to get some sort of interest on that money as you're saving it. And you might uh, be struggling to find a bank that doesn't charge you a fee if you don't have a minimal balance in mm -hmm. your checking account. But the good news is, is that in 2018, the number of those accounts is going up. Well, that's good. And yeah. now there are about 41% of checking accounts available out there that do not charge a fee. So... Oftentimes, it's just asking. Mm -hmm. You know, I know uh, years ago, we had a, a $150 fee on our checking account for overdraft protection, which okay. is a good thing because yep. sometimes cash flow is different from month to month, and you want to make sure you have that, that overdraft fee. And um, because of our relationship with the bank, we just asked for that fee to be waived, and they were happy to do it because <laughs> they wanted our business. Okay. So sometimes it's just a negotiation issue. Yeah. You know, uh, fees are not uh, set in stone. They can be negotiated. Mm -hmm. So make sure you ask. And, 
And if your bank isn't willing to negotiate, uh, 41% of checking accounts out there are willing to. And well, that's, that's good that's news. Good. So, so that gives a, you a big rising. advantage in, the, yeah. in that. So, so most of those uh, checking accounts, too, are non-interest bearing. So you're not going to get rich by putting money in a checking account today's market. So we're if you want to save but you still want to earn a return on that – uh, that that's where life insurance comes in. You can still earn a very nice internal rate of return, a long term, without giving up access to your money, and that is a that creates a wonderful savings tool when the uh, life insurance policy is designed correctly. And it keeps you having the liquidity, whereas um, a CD or something like that, um, you've got that surrender charge that we were talking about earlier. Right. That's going to uh, penalize you uh, significantly if you take your money out before. Um, you've agreed to let the man, the bank manage it for you. Now, now doesn't uh, you know talking about life insurance though? Doesn't life insurance have a surrender charge too? I mean, if you pay if you pay a premium and then got rid of it in three years, you wouldn't get all the money that you'd paid for it back. Is that a surrender well, charge? Well, in whole life insurance policies, you're actually buying two different types of insurance. You're buying base insurance, which is like a leased insurance on a year to year basis. And then the part of your premium goes to buy paid up insurance. That means it's paid for it. You own it. Mm -hmm. So if you surrender the policy and get rid of it, you don't lose money because the money that you don't get back in the first few years was money that was buying was and buying leasing the insurance. The insurance. Okay. You were covered. Uh, you had the coverage. Mm -hmm. You know, So it's kind of like automobile insurance. You pay your automobile insurance. If you don't have an accident, you still were covered. Sure. So you still bought that insurance. It's just that you didn't own it because you have to keep paying the premium. With paid up insurance, you don't have to keep paying the premium on that portion of insurance you own. Right. And, and something that's really nice about it too is you can still access the value you do have in the policy. Absolutely. It's not locked away like a CD. That's correct. So in, no surrender charge in order to do that. You just simply pay the interest charge that the insurance company would have been able to earn on that money somewhere else. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, one thing that we need to talk about too is overdraft fees and okay. ATM machine fees. They're insane in this country. Um, the overdraft fee in 2008 was $33.23 on average, which is up 35% from 1998. Okay. That's just uh, insane. Uh, just in one year alone, that's a 2.4% increase. That's higher than the rate of inflation. Mm. According to CNN Business, ATM overdraft fees made up the three top banks in America more than eight point seven billion with a B dollars in two thousand and seventeen. That's pretty high. That's not bad. Yeah. Maybe we should be in the banking business. <laughs> 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 That's uh, so that comes about to one point one billion on ATM machines, two point three billion on maintenance fees, and five point three billion on overdraft fees. So uh, if you're trying to save yourself fees, don't have overdrafts. Get overdraft yeah. protection, negotiate the fee on that so you're not paying anything. Try not to use the ATM. <laughs> Avoid your maintenance fees by negotiating those out and plan ahead and don't have to use those ATM machines in, uh, in places in the world where uh, they still require you to pay cash. Okay. So with this, um, you know, obviously there's lots of ways you can avoid fees. You don't have to... to uh, to do the investments that charge those high fees if you do your research ahead of time. If you uh, save your money in a place that doesn't charge you a fee but actually uh, pays you over time, like mm -hmm. in a life insurance policy where you get a nice rate of return, easily 3% internal mm -hmm. rate of return over a long period of time, that can uh, be a way where you actually earn money instead of paying Absolutely. fees to someone else. And of course, so, you it's know, we jokingly talk about maybe we should be in the banking business, but that really is what we're encouraging people to do is behave like a bank Certainly. and become your own money manager with that cash value that builds up in your life insurance policy. Because why should we lose those fees to a bank when those fees can be redirected back to ourself yeah, and well, we can uh, keep more of the money we make? Yeah, you, you'd be able to keep more of the money you make with those fees. Why shouldn't you do that? So with the, you know, I think the main takeaway here is that free is never free. <laughs> I, I've been reading a book here recently by George Gilder, uh, Life After Google is the title of it. Uh, it's fa very fascinating. He's definitely a thinker. And one of the things that he's pointing out is that the free information that even that we give to tech companies, like Google, mm -hmm. for example, yes. for all of their free products, that free information is not free. We do pay a price for it. We 
see ads. It takes time to see those. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, uh, we're basically selling our information in exchange for using the free product. So if you're listening to this podcast right now, uh, I can almost guarantee that you'll raise your hand with this question. How many of you have been sent a free credit card offer in the mail within the last 12 months? It's amazing how that free enticement is passed around, and this is the reason why. Americans paid $122 billion just in credit card interest alone in 2019 for this year. That's how much they That's paid. That's an example of free, not being free. That's an example of free. Now, we just uh, were complaining about the $8.7 billion that banks collect in fees. What about the $122 billion that credit card companies are collecting from Americans because they don't pay their credit card bill off each month? And that's something that's avoidable, to, complete, to be completely fair. That's something that you can avoid if you pay the credit card off every month. Um, and manage it wisely. You could even earn the points. But less than 26% of Americans do pay their credit card off every month. So if you're one of those people that is, congratulations, you're using credit wisely. Mm -hmm. If you're one of the people that allows your credit card debt to revolve, then that's where that $122 billion of wealth transfer is taking place. And it's not necessarily the credit card's company's problem. Mm -hmm. They've offered you a service. It's a problem that you need to get under control. And, of course, we work with people all the time helping them to get out of credit card debt because um, rather than just paying it off and having nothing to show for it, it's always better to pay it off and have an asset to show for it. And that's what we help people do. Yes. Yeah, you want to you save at the same time. You know, savings is indispensable. And that's something that um, that we're, we're seeing as we go through all these different fees. You know, whether you're spending with credit card, you have fees, overdraft fees, bank fees, um, you know, on the spending side. And when you're saving, well, excuse me, actually investing, thinking that you're saving, there's fees on that side too. It's hard to get away from those fees. And so that's why... Um, that's why we, you, it's important to realize that savings is an absolutely critical part of your financial plan for the future. You want to be able to put money in a place where you have guarantees, liquidity, safety. And the place where you can do that today without investing and taking on the risk of investment and all the fees that are associated with that is with participating whole life insurance. And, of course, we can't completely um, say this this topic is uh, completely exhausted until we look at the fees charged on student loans. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, there's, uh, there's $521 billion more dollars loaned out on student loans than on credit card debt right now. Okay. So it's much higher than credit card debt. $122 billion is paying on interest on credit card. What kind of interest do you think might be being paid on student loan debt right now? It's high. And when we look at the statistics, one out of every 10 student loans is 90 days delinquent or in default. So that means that the, uh, the that there's got to be fees, late fees. There's and late all fees. Of that there's adding all up as well. that uh, up as well. Okay. okay. And, you know, 69% of students that go to college have, fee, have loans and 14% of their parents have student loans for their students, for their, for their children. Mm. So when we look at all this together and we see that 51% or more of college graduates say their schooling has made no difference in their lifestyle, this is a fee that could be completely avoided if we didn't constantly teach and preach that everyone's got to have a college education to get on in the world. Mm. If 51% and more college graduates say it made no difference in their lifestyle, what did they spend all this money for on schooling for? It's, it's a good question. It's a question that's becoming ever more relevant in our society today. You know, I was reading uh, just recently that the, um, the Catholics in the Dark Ages would sell uh, 
sell uh, penances yes. and, and all of the all the tokens that you could buy to supposedly buy your way out of purgatory into heaven. Mm-hmm. And the um, and really, that's kind of what the universities are doing today. Is they have changed? The, they're selling pieces of paper to buy your way into the workforce out of yes. a low-paying job, and yet people are finding out that that doesn't work. Yes, and you know, not that education is bad because everyone Certainly. needs to be educated. Certainly, but not all education comes from a college or a university, mm-hmm. and so it's important for um, you as a parent or you as a, a student or maybe uh, thinking about going to college, university, to really evaluate what it is that this four years or two years or whatever you're going to spend in college, how is it going to change your future? What's the guarantees there? You know, if you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be, you know, a, a professional, those degrees are required to get your license. Certainly. But what about some of the other degrees that are being thrown out here that really are not uh, anything more than a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. You know, recently um, it was our opportunity to go to Cuba and everybody in Cuba gets an education and our tour guide said it means nothing. They put it in their drawer and it stays there because everyone's got a degree, Mm -hmm. but nobody in Cuba has uh, has any meaningful work. Because even if you graduate as a doctor in Cuba, you make about $30 a month, but it costs $80 to rent a house. Mm. And, and you were reading here uh, recently that those doc, those Cuban doctors are then exported to other countries, but Cuba maintains a hold over them. They do. And, well. and this came out recently at the UN when the Brazilian president said he clamped down on the fact that uh, Cuba's main export is physicians. Mm-hmm. And uh, certain countries will allow those Cuban physicians to come in and work. And instead of paying the doctor their wages, they pay it back to the regime in Cuba. So the regime in Cuba can keep its lifestyle up while the poor doctor in that foreign country barely has a stipend enough to live on. And so So, this is kind of what... They they get to live in another country, they don't get the benefits of it. And how much different is that than what's happening with student loans today? We get someone burdened down with student loans that they can't make it, so then they go out into the workforce and they're enticed to earn only uh, an income that's low enough so they don't have to pay anything back on the student loan, and then the interest accrues on the student loan and they become part of this 90% delinquency or default rate. Yeah. It's, it's just it's, a catch-22 if you're it, not it careful. It is. It can become a vicious cycle. And yet, here in America, you still have the opportunity to break out of that cycle. It might not be easy, but you still have the opportunity and the ability to break out of that cycle. Uh, so that that's an important takeaway. You need to have savings as you break out of that cycle. Some people will say, well, let me just focus. Let me get this debt paid off. And especially when it comes to student loans, you know, this can be the elephant in the room. Well, you know, student Nelson loans can Nash, take a long time to pay down, just like trying to pay down a mortgage. If you focus all of your resources to paying down student loan or your mortgage, then a number of years later, you'll have lost time. Yes, you'll have yes. those things paid off, but where did the time go? What else can you do? You need to build an asset along the way as you're doing this. And that gets us into a whole number of the topic where we'll have to talk about some other place but the time value of money. You know, Nelson Nash, the the author of Becoming Your Own Banker, always used to say in the seminars we'd hire him to come out and speak for us, he would say, if you can keep from paying fees and you can keep the interest that you're paying to someone else, you'll win by default because everybody else is paying fees and everybody else is paying interest. Mm -hmm. And if you can keep that money for yourself... And that's become the slogan of life benefits to help you keep more of the money you're making. Because if you keep losing money to fees, then you're going to become part of the 90% of Americans who are going to be dependent on Social Security for your income in retirement. That's not where you want to be. (laughs) 90% of Americans depend on Social Security for their retirement. You don't want to be there and... If you don't understand the fees that are being extracted from you, which 95% of Americans don't even realize they're paying fees, 
That's where we come in. That's where we want to help you understand how to stop losing money and keep more of what you're making. That's right. You can break out of this vicious cycle. It does take time. It does take work. Know the fees that you're paying so you can decide whether uh, there's any way to avoid those. Keep more of that money that you make. And yes, you can indeed win your financial game. You are listening to Wealth Talks, where we talk about solutions for your prosperity. Have a great week.